guys, Rhett Rose YT here with you, and today we are going to be playing another episode of Quest for Glory Part 1. And I have to apologize because it literally took me a month to get another episode up here. Sorry, I was pushing buttons. But... Uh, yeah, it had been a few weeks since I played. Not intentionally, really. Just, uh, I usually play what I'm in the mood for, and while these are my absolute favorite games in the world, I just was playing other stuff, and, you know, I, I just was... I play what I'm in the mood for, but also I'd just been busy with, um, streaming stuff and just life, you know, after Christmas. But, yeah, anyway, it's coming up here for ya. We'll log in get the character pulled up but I'm really excited about this episode 3 of West Glory 1 had to get to see our logo in there right okay smoke YT so if you'll recall in the last few episodes here we have found out all kinds of fun stuff that there's an ogress apparently named Baba Yaga excuse me who has put a curse on the Baron and in response to the curse the Baron lost his son and daughter brigands have attacked brigands have attacked several people you have a quest to find the brigand leader to stop Baba Yaga to find the Baron's son and daughter and now we just got a quest from the Dryad who told us that we have to get a healing potion made to disenchant, uh, for of uh, disenchantment. Oh, look, it's the graveyard. What a rundown place. Why am I not hearing anything? Are you guys hearing any sound? Maybe I just don't have this turned up. Hold on. Yeah, I'm not getting any sound at all. Certainly creepy here, even in the daylight hours. That is the red root growing out of one of the graves has a strange and evil appearance. That is actually the mandrake root that we need to get a hold of. So hopefully, let me just check my volume here. Yeah, volume's up. Okay. Maybe there's just not a lot to, to see right now. That's the mandrake root. Well, that's going to be important later. The large tombstone seems to have a barely legible epitaph. Here lies an atheist, all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> Growing up out of the grave is an evil looking plant with a slimy poisonous sheen. Nothing grows in the dirt of the old graveyard. Some of the graves appear to have been disturbed. That's interesting. Well, anyway. Um, okay, I definitely heard something there. <laughs> that scared the crap out of me, actually. Uh, anyway. Oh no, I gotta run. How do I run? I'm not trying to cast a spell, I'm trying not to die. Oh, there it is. There's Ron. Um. This is not happening. Sorry, I was trying to run away and, uh,. Okay, sorry. Anyway, to recap, stay here for a second while I can finish recapping. The dryad of the woods here who came out of this tree, we followed the white stag to her. She said that we are going to need to um, make an enchantment, a uh, disenchanting potion in order to help help save the wood and, and the madness. So, ugh, I am scared to run into that guy again because I really... Whoa! This is an important screen for later. We don't need to be there right now. Um, yeah, so to help us... Oh, oh no, 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 run! Yeah, okay, so we're, we're in the brigands area and we don't want to be there. <laughs> oh, come on. At least I know where the run button is, isn't it? There, run. That's why I'm running the brigands. Sorry. 
Oh, come on. oh well, I can beat this guy. Um, yeah, and then the dryad gave us a magic acorn, which is part of the potion. And we have a, a list of ingredients that we have to gather in order to have the healer make the potion, the disenchantment potion. Sylvan silver coins. Oh, that's also an important screen for later. So we must be close to, oh. We're close to town, we had to, gotta be. So yeah, anyway, we have to collect the ingredients to have her make the potion. And we're back to town. I don't really need to talk to Heinrich, but anyway. So yeah, we gotta gather the ingredients. What else do we need to do? Um, let me see what's in our bag here. Oh, we got a glowing gem. So if we want to, we can uh, get into Baba Yaga's hut. We happened upon Baba Yaga's hut and a gate and the skull at the front of the gate said that in order for him to let us pass, we had to get him a glowing gem for his eyes. So we managed to do that. We bartered with a frost giant and got a pretty gem. So when we're ready, we can go and uh, go into Bobby Yaga's hut if we decide we want to. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go. You tell the healer that you have been to visit the Dryad of the Woods and that she gave you a magic acorn and told you the formula for a potion to dispel enchantments. Here you go. She's giving you a recap there. So you helped the Dryad. That's nice. She does keep the forest around here healthy. So that's how to make a dispel potion, is it? Or so that's how to make a dispel potion, is it? Thanks for letting me know. Sure! Uh... And you can just give her stuff like flowers from Rana's Peace, Magic Mushroom. She'll be happy to pay us. But we need her to make the dispel potion. So let's give her what we have specifically for the spell potion. Which these, she might just take these as spell components. But I'll give her the magic acorn while. Oh. So you gave it to her. Let's see. You still need fairy dust, green fur, flowers from Rana's Peace, and flying water. So if I give you the flowers, you won't just take them as spell components? I hope not. No. Oh, okay. She did take him for that. So we need fairy dust, green fur, and flying water. Okay. So should we... What time is it? Let's see what time it is before. I was going to say, should we go venture out and see if we can find any more ingredients? Oh, mid-morning. We got plenty of time. So we need to find some green fur. Uh, some flying water. You know, let's go back this way. I think, I think, I might know how to get to one of those. And it's a fun, fun place for other reasons. There's snow. Wait a minute. That, that could be a fun place to go if I'm thinking right. Oh, nope, that's the frost, froggies layer. Oh, okay, well, all right, we didn't go far enough north north a bit more. Sorry, you guys know I ha how I am about directions if you've been around my channel for very long. Oh, there's snow too. Yes, this is where I was thinking. Where are we? Funny, you've never heard anything about the Great Wall of Spielberg before. You'll have to get a new travel agent. <laughs> uh, that's quite an impressive rock group. <laughs> Um, the road seems to wind forever up the mountain. Where are we at health-wise? Let me just double check. Mm, we're okay. Okay. Alright, let's say we try to go up the mountain. Whoa! A sign appears. It reads, Willkommen auf Zauberberg. Another sign appears. It reads, Trespassers will be towed. T-O-A-D. Okay. Now watch. We're going to actually see the little hero going up there. Oh, I thought we would. Maybe not. 
I thought we could see the little adventurer going up the hill, like up there. Maybe not. What is this? You feel as though you have just scaled the Matterhorn in full armor. What a climb! You can see all of Spielberg Valley from here. After you finally catch your breath, you see that you have reached the rather eccentric looking house that you saw from below. There is an ugly gargoyle above the entrance. He looks scary. Stand fast! He who would the wizard see first must answer questions three. What is your name? Uh, I am Oz the Great and Terrible. I am Inigo Montalban. That should be Inigo Mont Montoya. Uh, Putin tame. Ask me again and I'll tell you the same. Or Elvis's ghost. I Let's tell the truth. Smoke. What is your quest? Uh, I just happened to be in the neighborhood and thought, excuse me, thought I'd drop by. I want to be a pirate. I want to boldly go where no one has gone before. I want to be a wizard. Or I want to be a hero. I want to be a hero. What is the mean airspeed of an unladen swallow? How am I supposed to know? 186,000 miles per second. 35 miles per hour. 9.8 meters per second squared. African or European? I'm just going to say I don't know. Neither do I. Go on in. <laughs> the wizard will see you now. I didn't remember that, actually. Go directly up to the tower. Do not dally. The stone creature looks like it's bored. Wouldn't you be? Yes, I would indeed. Through the open door, you can see that the inside of Erasmus's tower is even more unusual than the outside. Uh, and it just occurred to me I'm going to have to turn down the speed a little bit here because if we don't, we're not going to be able to talk to him just because of the way the game is. Uh, I was trying to look at the gates, but... Oh, from outside you can see that the interior of the house is curiously furnished. Okay, let's go on in. Oh, that's too slow. Blech. This room is full of odds, ends, and stuff. The wizard must be a real character. Let me turn the speed a little bit higher than that. But just a little, we literally won't be able to talk. What is all this stuff? The poor stuffed peacock seems bedraggled, worn, and overused. Oh, pretty, look. It's like a, was it CBS or NBC that did the peacock? I don't know, what is this? It's the famous Duncan Dragon. You haven't seen one of those in years. So there's a rat sitting there. There is a strange figure on the bookshelf. It looks like an overgrown rat wearing a wizard's hat. Oh, bottle? It's probably a bottle of gin. <laughs> what's that? This is a Zen lamp. You feel enlightened in its presence. Ooh, what's that? A switch. A casket with a stick shift? Ooh, a dragon. It was a moderately large and fearful dragon at one time. Erasmus likes to keep his suits well ironed. Oh my. Through the portal to the west stands a small sitting room. And let's look at the portrait. Your eyes are drawn to the eyes of the figure in the portrait. His intense stare is unnerving. This would not be someone to trifle with, for he looks subtle and quick to anger. Well, can I talk to him? You get no response. You get no response. No response. The peacock doesn't respond. Maybe its ears are too stuffed to hear. <laughs> okay, well. I go, he said to go up the tower. It's not a good idea to mess around in his house or try to steal anything. It really isn't. Well. Okay, they totally just disappeared. A weird looking tower. Come in and sit down. Okay, so the wizard in the picture was actually him. Fenris, our guest has arrived. Oh, and the rat. Cheese, please. Cute. Ah. Since you are a practitioner of the magical arts, you might be interested in a little game I have. Do you know the spell open? Yes. Do you know the spell fetch? I don't think I do. The magic shop in town sells a learning scroll. It's a very useful spell for moving things at a distance. You need the spell to play the game. I actually don't like playing the game. It's kind of boring. But anyway, let's... Oh, it would be best to wait until Erasmus puts down his cup of tea before asking any questions. Okay, there we go. Ask about Erasmus. I am a wizard of some renown. Fenris. 
What am I? Some sort of object? Am I invisible or something like you talk? Wait. Am I invisible or something that you talk about me behind my back in front of my face? Sheesh. No respect. It's hard to take anyone very seriously who wears such a ridiculous hat. Did you hear the joke about the witch's broom? No. That's odd. It's sweeping the valley. Let's just brush that one aside, shall we? <laughs> they, they tell a bunch of jokes. That's why I said I had to slow down the speed because if you don't slow down the speed, there will be no time between those jokes and you won't be able to do anything. So you literally have to slow it down just to get a, literally get a word in edgewise. All right, magic. If magic be the loot of life, play on. The quote was music, not magic, and it was food, not loot. How about magic makes the world go round? Money makes the world go round. Oh, very well then, to put in my own words, magic is the essence and the soul of life, and the wizard is her poet. Actually, it was Merlin who said that first, but he used the term magician, not wizard. Fenris, there are times when you would look better as a newt. Why is that? Because newts can't talk. Neither can most rats. So that's a fair point. All right, um, let's ask about Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga is good at curses and shape-changing spells. She has a nasty temper and doesn't believe in safe hex, so it's best to stay on her good side. You have to watch her. She cheats at cards. So do you. She started it first. Besides, I wanted her to get a taste of her own medicine. Shame she still beats you. Curses. The curse Baba Yaga placed upon Baron von Spielberg was a fine example of creative cursing. Upon von Spielberg and all his clan, this is the curse I now demand. What I will shall come for measure, so shall ye lose all that ye treasure. Of course, the problem is that for every curse there is an equal and opposite counter curse. Really? Ask about counter curses. This is extremely important information, by the way, guys. A counter curse is a cure for a curse. It usually works against the one who cast the curse in the first place. The counter curse for the curse of the Baron goes, Comes a hero from the east. Free the man from in the beast. Bring the child from out the band. Dry the curser from the land. So, to break the curse, a hero must get rid of Baba Yaga in addition to all the other things. It does not reflect well on Baba Yaga. Aha! Uh -huh. Nothing reflects well upon that ogre. She has a face that would break anything but a magic mirror. Ooh, magic mirror, huh? There are many types of magic mirrors. One of the more common types is the one that has a strange face popping up every so often. Reminds me of the one in the master bedroom. That's not magical. No, but it does have a strange face peering from it whenever you're in the room. At any rate, I used to have a nice magic hand mirror I misplaced around here somewhere. It could be used upon... It could be used to reflect a spell back upon the caster. So if you happen upon a small golden magic mirror with a dragon handle on it, you'll know it's mine. It was the flagon with a dragon. The mirror had a leer. Oh, that's right. Well, if you find a magic mirror with a face on it, you'll know it reflects spells. Okay. Counter curses versus... Um, that's about Arana. Never met her. I only built this vacation home here a, couple, a century ago. Arana has a nice little magical meadow in her name, northwest of here. Pretty respectable spellcaster, I imagine. The protection spell she cast over the town is fairly good. Oh, sorry. Hang on. But I believe she missed a few places. Yeah, she sure did. You're just jealous because the only thing anyone named after you was a soft drink. I thought that Erasmus's Razzle Dazzle Root Beer was a wonderful name for the product. It's a shame the company went broke afterwards. Alright, protection spell. Irana's spell protects the use of excessive violence or hostile magic within Spielberg's walls, with the exception of a couple of places. Places. Looks to me as if she missed the back part of the alley, <laughs> and the spell only applies to areas in town above the ground. Pretty shoddy, if you ask me. Nobody asked you. Okay. That's good to know, guys. All of this is good information. He's pretty useful about that. Let's ask about Zara. Zara has a real flair for the theatric. Her entrance at the magic shop is a bit showy, but effective. 
It's a pity she has no sense of humor. Just because she doesn't laugh at your jokes doesn't mean that she has she lacks a sense of humor. It just means that she has good taste. All right, uh, spellcasters. Basically, anyone who uses magic is a magic user. Anyone who casts spells is a spellcaster. However, to be a wizard, you need to have undergone initiation into the Wizards Institute of Tech. Oh, I'm sorry, Technosery in the land of Chepier. Magicians and sorcerers are wizards who specialize. I myself strive to master all aspects of magic, unlike those narrow-minded specialists. You wouldn't want to lose your amateur standing, after all. I prefer to think of myself as a dilettante. Does that mean that you tease pickles? You need to complete your quest here before you can become initiated as a wizard. It's important for a magic user to know as many spells as possible. You never know just what might come in handy. Well, I'm not a full-fledged uh, wizard. I just can cast some magic spells. Okay, I think we actually... Oh, yes, just about everything. Uh, brigands, let's ask about those. They're supposed to have a warlock working with them. From what I've seen, he's more a nincompoop than a necromancer. Do you know the difference between a cheetar and a comma? No. A cheetar has claws at the end of its paws, and a comma is a pause at the end of a clause. Wow. Yeah, the jokes don't get any better. And like I said, you, it's very hard to get, to get a word in edgewise if you don't slow this down. Alright, let's ask about the warlock. The only thing I've seen the brigand warlock cast is sneezing powder. Okay. Necromancer? Isn't that the vampire who fell in love with throats? No, no, that's a necromancer. A necromancer is a magic user who has a rather unsavory relationship with corpses. Ew. Does that mean a necromancer has ghoul friends? D oh, it, that was so bad it took me a minute to get it. <laughs> it means a necromancer is someone who deals with the undead. Canasta with cadavers and spades with shades, eh? Ugh. Minkumpu. He laughs too much when he casts the spells. That's because his jokes are funnier than yours. Okay, I think we've gotten just about everything we can get from Erasmus. At least as a rogue. Mage's Maze is the game that you can play with him if you have a, a, a lot of spells, but you really you don't. And... We're, we're a rogue, so enough already. Uh, can we talk to Fenris? Fenris. What's there to say? For a rat, I'm a really great guy. Although, for such a rat, you're such a great guy, you're really a rat. Erasmus. Erasmus is my familiar. Isn't that the other way around? Familiar is my Erasmus? Well, I've always found Erasmus to be overly familiar. No, no, I mean, aren't you my familiar? Tsk, tsk, all these years and you still don't know. Yeah, there, uh, there's really not anything else we can say. Not in my house, you don't. All I was trying to do was stand up. Anyway, so that's Erasmus. You do get a lot, quite a lot of information midday, okay, from him, and I'm going to save it. Save early, save often. You guys have seen how easy it is to die. Oops, I gotta turn the speed up. Oh. Okay, when I get to the next screen, I will turn it up, golly. So slow if you don't. Usually just turn it all the way up. Oh, and I forgot something. We're supposed to be sneaking. You can sneak everywhere in this game, and the more you sneak, the better your, um... Your stealth gets up, and I haven't been sneaking. I should have been sneaking everywhere. Uh, I don't want to go see Erasmus again, but there is... Holy crap. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Look, it's the dinosaur. It looks like a dinosaur trudging grumpily to work. Now, this is actually a joke from back in the day. Um, I... <laughs> If you weren't born in the 80s or earlier, you wouldn't recognize that. But um, <laughs> there used to be a show, an old show called Dinosaurs. 
and that was the father of the family of the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, all right. I want to see if we can find any other uh, spell components. Come on. Oh, I don't want to go back up to see Erasmus again. Oh, come on. That's just a goblin. Oh no, we're tired. Man, you see why I say? Quickly die! Oh, that was close. You just died. If you run out of stamina, you die. You search your opponent. You find a single silver corn, corn coin. Carefully polish it and place it in your house. What a way to make a living. Yes, and I'm about to die from not having enough stamina. No, 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 no. I don't need to do that. What time is it? Mid-afternoon. Okay, it's getting close to night. I should... Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. You pick up a few small rocks. I'm going to save, actually. Because who knows what else is going to happen. What, what, what are you loading? Oh, it scared me there for a second. Um... What am I fighting? I don't even see it. We're so weak as a rogue. We're gonna have to rest again and we're getting close to night. Four silver coins. What time is it? Mid-afternoon. I'm gonna have to rest another hour because if I don't, we're gonna be in trouble. Now what time is it? Oh, it's still mid-afternoon? Okay, then rest for another hour. Too impatient to rest right now. Okay, well, where are we at? Stamina, 22 out of 32. That's not too bad. Okay. All right, well, we need to at least be thinking about trying to get back to town. Unless we want to be out here after dark. And this early in the game, I'm not sure if that's a great idea. Oh, I can't go right. Oh, well, we made it back to town. <laughs> it's okay, I don't really need to talk to you, Heinrich Ferderferden. So, well, let's see. We could, oh, I know what we should do. We could go work at the uh, castle again, but there's something else we can do too. Next to the town's wall, you notice a man who appears to be waiting for someone. His dagger looks like a particularly deadly weapon and the thief handles it with great skill. Okay, I'll talk to him. What's in it for me? If you give me a silver, I might have a bit of info we can use. Uh, he does, but it's nothing we can't find elsewhere. Actually, do you, if you guys remember, we were supposed to go to the inn around supper time be, to talk to the merchant that got robbed. Abdullah. Oh, he's not here yet. What time is it? Mid-afternoon. Oh. I guess it's not late enough yet. Let's go out. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that. Well, it's a very loud door. Let me see if it'll let us rest. Oh, good. Well, what time is it? Sunset approaches. Okay, that should be dinner time. There he is! We want to talk to Abdullah, the merchant. You take a seat at the table nearest the fire. Oh, it is indeed sad and dangerous times we live in when a man who struggles daily to keep from starving should be robbed of all his earthly wealth possessions. I want to talk to him. What you doing? Oh. Hey, Shima. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish food or drink? Sure, why not? Order yourself a meal for three silvers. Well, all right. Give her, order her a drink then. Jeez. You caffeine addicts are all alike. <laughs> all right. Well, while she's going to get us a drink. Not hungry. It means I must eat one of my rations. What a waste. Okay. Anyway, let's talk to Shimin. Ask about the robbery. Two weeks ago, I was going to be wealthy beyond what could, you could dream of. I, Abdullah Du, would be the first merchant into this valley this year. 
but my life was shattered by brigands. Brigands. The band of brigands ambushed us just as we crossed the pass into the valley. There were about twelve brigands, including a huge minotaur. There was also a leader and some sort of wizard. They, f hmm. they first used some sort of magic which blinded us. Then they overwhelmed my six guards and my assistants. All my trade goods taken from before me. I am now but a beggar, living off the generosity of my friends. Magic. The wizard threw something at us that caused my eyes to be blinded with tears and my nose to be forced to sneeze. I was helpless. Hmm. Minotaur. The Minotaur is a creature with the head of a bull and the body of a man. They are said to be very strong. Leader. The leader was wearing a cloak, so I couldn't see his face. His voice was rather high-pitched, though. Wow. I... <laughs> As a kid, I, I didn't realize how obvious they made this stuff. Wizard. The wizard was very short, and he giggled most of the time. I couldn't understand what he was saying. I bring you that which you ordered. May it please and satisfy you. Thank you, Shima. That's very sweet. Alright. You can't do anything while she's walking in her out. But uh, let me see if I can get them some gold. Your offer is gracious, but keep your coins. Abdallah Du is no beggar. Okay, well, how do I give him... I think I could give him some food. Can I? Let's try this. The mer There we go. The merchant gratefully accepts your food ration and consumes it in record time. Alright, well, then I'll eat my own drink. The beverage goes down smoothly and well. Okay, let's see if we can ask Abdullah anything. Oh, she has to clear the table first. Permit me to clear the table for you. Okay, let's see if we can ask him anything else. I was trying to click on his cup. Alright, uh... Guards. Here I pay good money for men to protect me, and what do they do when I need protection? They run away! Not one man died to defend my treasure. You can't, just can't hire good guards anymore. <laughs> the guard would like to die either for your treasure. Oh, uh, let's see. We already asked about the brigands. Let's ask about wealth. I had treasures carefully brought from Chepierre with me. I even had a magic carpet with me. Ooh, magic carpet. That's it? Oh, I was hoping that we could ask about the magic carpet. I am Abdullah Du, son of Ali, grandson of Hassan, and former master merchant of Chepierre. Now I am but a penniless burden upon my friends. Let's ask about your friends. Even though they too lost a fortune when the brigands stole from me, Shamin and Shima are caring for this frail shadow of a great man. Shima? Shima is the finest of cooks, outside of myself, that is. But her fine food is as dust in my mouth, for I am but a beggar. Shemin? He is the very prince of Katas. That's this little dude over here. Chepier. Ah, Chepier, beautiful land of golden sands and shining sun, the heart of civilization. Alas, she is plagued with fierce jinn and ifrits who seek to drive all men in Katas from the land. But I can speak no more of the whole land I shall never see again. Instead, I will die in this cold, forsaken land, bereft of all I love. Boy, depressed much? I think I already asked about merchant. I trade the treasures of one land for that of another, but the brigands have stolen every treasure I had, and I am a merchant no more. Okay, can I say anything about myself? No. Very good food, very good drink, finest in town. See to rest, you'll be served by my Shima. Okay, well, at this point, guys, I think that's all we can talk to them about, and it is night, so I think I'm going to pay them for... A night stay and go to bed. May you dream of all the rewards you deserve. You thank Shemin and pay him five silvers for the room. And then I think we're going to end it here for the night. The sleep heals and refreshes you. Or at least for this, not for the night, but for this episode. Okay. Save. All right. Well, we are going to be playing more again, guys. So just letting you know. I, I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to this game. I... It's still my favorite game ever, 
and I'm sorry I, I haven't, um, it's been a while since I played it. It's been like three or four weeks since I played it, but I will play it more. Please stick around and watch the rest of this game. And I'm going to play through the rest of them with a possible exception of three. Really, I should play three because it's in the series. It's just not one that I, uh, ironically of all of them, it's the one that I didn't really play much as a kid. And I don't know it as well, which is not a reason for not playing it. I guess it just doesn't hold as um, sweet a place in my heart as the rest of them. We'll see when we get there. I might end up playing it anyway. I have them all. So you guys let me know if you want me to play three. A lot of people loved three. So anyway, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like it and subscribe. Thank you for being with me, guys. Retro's YT signing out for tonight. Bye.